let's get started. The mission of the Richmond School Board is to provide our students with high quality educational experiences, ensure parents, families, and community are involved, and to ensure that students master essential skills, grow and learn, becoming productive citizens and lifelong learners. School Board candidates, what qualifies you for this role and what makes you the most qualified candidate? And we'll start with Mr. Thompson. Good evening, my name is Jason Thompson. I'm running for school board in the 6th district because I believe that it is time for a change. The schools that are in the Richmond City uh, public school system, we only have 10 schools that are accredited as far as the elementary schools are concerned. MLK is no longer accredited as well. We need to come up with new and innovative ideas as to how we can get these schools accredited, but not just that. We need to make sure that these buildings are taken care of. Overby Shepherd has structural damage to it. We need to make sure that the violence is taken care of at not just MLK, but also at Armstrong, at George Wythe, and also at John Marshall. I'm running because I'm a parent and I'm a concerned citizen. Thank you. Good evening, uh, my name is Kevin Stallings. I'm running for school board in third district. Uh, the reason I'm running is because I get it. I have the ability to manage the interests of all constituents, work towards action and not debating, provide strong leadership in tough times, listen when necessary, and act when needed. I understand what our community needs from our school board. We need a transparent voice of reason in our decision-making processes and someone that can communicate the desires of our parents and the rest of our community. With years of civic sacrifice under my belt and a passion to bettering our school system, I, po I possess those aforementioned attributes necessary to fulfill the roles at the highest level. Being a local business owner, active volunteer in our schools, advocate for those that are homeless and the veterans, and a champion for entrepreneurship, I have spent the last 10 plus years gaining the necessary experience and trust of our community to be successful in this position, and I'm ready for the challenge. Good evening. My name is Jeff Bourne, and I'm currently school board representative for the third district, as well as chair of the Richmond School Board. I'm running today for the same reason that I ran in 2012. That's because of Sydney and Joseph, my two children. I want them and all of Richmond City's children to have a world-class education that prepares them for the workforce or college. We've made great strides in Richmond Public Schools, but I don't think it's any secret to anyone in this room that we still have a lot of work to do. I'm committed to finish that work, to keep working towards the goals that we have, and continue to fight that fight so that no matter what your zip code is in the city of Richmond, the school you attend is high performing, high functioning, and ready to prepare you, not just for today, but for tomorrow. I'm Ricky Johnson. I'm running the 6th District School Board because I'm a parent, and not only that I'm a parent, but because when kids start walking out of a classroom, to get education, to get funding, we as parents all need to put our name on the ballot to make a difference. For the last four years, every kid in Richmond Public School should get a better education. Also, myself, um, also, as running, I have, I have a nonprofit organization that stretches three cities and touch over 30,000 families. Pretty much, I'm just frustrated with the school system. I'm tired of the way it is right now. And by me being a product, why not run? Good evening, my name is Jesse Perry. Um, speaking to my qualifications, I have a very diverse educational experience in my life. Uh, I, I obtained a mass communication certification in high school and went on to get a triple major in political science, philosophy, and communication studies with a minor in ethics. I'm continuing with a master's program right now. I also have a very diverse uh, professional experience, including management, uh, budgeting, and a lot of other things. And I, I tell you all of this to say, that it all boils down to I have an ability 
to build teams and I have an ability to accomplish shared goals and that's what we need right now is we need to have a team that works in the community for you all. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. I'm a 20-year educator. That's why I'm running for re-election. My name is Shonda Harris Muhammad. Now, I am the current 6th District School Board representative. I have been in public education for 20 years, serving as a math teacher, serving as a math specialist, serving as a compliance specialist, which oversees special education, assistant principal, summer school principal. I get it. I understand policy. I understand what moves a school district. It's three things. Instruction, effective instruction, and good leadership. That is why Shonda Harris Muhammad, myself, is running for re-election for the school board for the 6th district. We will now have community volunteer Wendy McKay come up and present a question for our new school board candidates. We are all aware of the financial issues that are challenging our schools. What are the major non-financial issues facing RPS and how would you address those issues? You have one minute apiece to answer that question. One of the major issues that we're not addressing is the issue of trauma. Many of the children that we have in our school district, specifically in the 6th district, deal with traumatic situations on a daily basis. Many of them don't have food, they only eat when they're at school. We have to deal with the real issues behind what is going on with these children. We have achievement problems in our schools. And unless we're willing to deal with those issues, we're not going to get uh, the achievement gap to get closed. Uh, we, like I said, we need to make sure that we deal with the traumatic incidents that these children are dealing with. We also need to make sure that we are working towards achievement goals. Um, let's be honest, uh, in reference to the non-financial, there are a lot of non-financial issues that are major. Um, gang violence, um, teacher pay, um, instruction, um, but overall we have to look at the reality of authentic learning um, as a priority in Richmond Public Schools. Uh, we have to set a, a precedence um, to be able to educate our kids and prepare them for life after high school. Um, the reality is every child's not going to go to college, but what are we doing to educate those kids to make sure that they're still successful in life after high school? Uh, I do believe that uh, changing the education system is a drastic thing that, you know, there's something we have to do. Uh, there's something that's going to take a lot of effort to do so, but I do believe that as a community, if we pull together, that that's something that we can do. question was, what non-financial or fiscal issues do we still need to address? I think there are, there, as Kevin said, there are many issues that we still need to make progress on, but two jump to mind. First and foremost, we have to increase our parental involvement in our schools, parental and community involvement, because when a community is engaged and embraces and adopts and gets involved in a school, it's healthier, it's stronger, and the students benefit tremendously. Second piece, and this touches a lot of non-financial issues. The student discipline issue in a, not only our school system, but many school systems across the state and across this country has to be addressed because we are doing, and I say we, all of us in public education are doing a disservice to those students because we are exacerbating that school to prison pipeline. And so changing the way that we do discipline um, is critical. We have to make sure that students remain in school, remain in the classroom, and remain learning if we're going to make this division the school division that we want and expect. The question is what non-financial accountability, credibility, and stability. We cannot have people coming in and out of our children's lives. We need principals that's going to fill positions, not just put a person in a position. 
We have situations where if kids go to school and don't have the same person there year after year, the kid gets lost. It's just like building a family. When you have a mother and a father, or just a mother at home, that kid learns that person's behavior in exchange. That adult learns that person's behavior. Accountability, we got to show accountability for where we're putting our money. We can't just use money across the board. We can't just use it for what we think is needed for. It needs to be used for what it's given for. Also, a credibility. We as the leaders need to be held accountable for what we're doing and what we're teaching. Not just a test and not just SOLs, but we need to educate our kids on all levels. They are our replacement. When we are gone, they're the ones that's gonna stand here before you right now and take that place. So that's why. So as all of my uh, partners up here, candidates here uh, have said, there's a lot of issues in the schools today. And all of those issues are, are going to take some level of financial uh, ability to pay for them and pay for programs to fix them. However, where we need to really start is we need to start at improving effective communication at all levels of stakeholders in our communities. There's a lot of people that care about children in this community going from parents up all the way up to elected officials at the highest level. And everybody needs to come together to effectively communicate with the dialogue and come together to spur the involvement and accountability necessary to overcome the issues that we have today. Thank you. Meeting children where they are is a non-financial issue. And that's what we have to continue to do. We already have trauma counselors. We work with organizations that provide trauma um, counseling to our children and our families for free. The other um, non-financial issue that I agree with the young lady who was sitting beside me is effective communication. We, and it starts at the top, we have to continue, and I have been an advocate of effective co communication if you have followed me through social media or attended any school board meeting or any of my chat and choose. If we are not communicating through our local PTAs in our school, or if we're not communicating with our families by meeting them where they are, then Houston, we do have a serious problem. Thank you. Thank you. This next question, I would like our new candidates to answer first. Many of our schools were built when the city population was at its maximum with approximately 50,000 students. Now we have approximately 22,000 students with significant budget deficits and high cost of facilities maintenance. First part of the question. Do you believe school consolidation is a viable option? Second, why or why not? School consolidation would only be a viable option if we redistrict in the appropriate manner. If we are not going to redistrict the schools, then consolidating the schools will create more problems than we already have at this point in time. Consolidating schools, I don't believe, is um, going to really solve a lot of the issues, um, being that there's only pretty much one high school um, in one area. There's maybe one or two middle schools in an area. There's elementary schools uh, in an area. If we consolidate those schools, uh, we come up to the problems that we currently have in a lot of the schools where um, our low poverty children are pushed into one classroom, one building, um, and it's, it, it seems to stem a lot of the violence, um, a lot of the gang violence, uh, a lot of the issues when it comes to our children being educated properly because their focus is on other things. Um, so I don't believe school co consolidation uh, really is gonna work um, unless we look at the big factor in reference to, um, like uh, my partner beside me said, how we redistrict the zones to see what kids are consolidated within the schools. I too agree. I don't agree with consolidation for the simple fact that when a school is in a community, it builds that child up. By putting all the kids together, you're not giving every child the opportunity they deserve for the simple fact that 
when they challenge race in the community and going to that community school, he values that community, he has morals within that community. And when you're putting them all together, now every child has the ability to learn on the same level or get the attention he or she needs. So on the topic of school consolidation, I believe that if we're going to look at school consolidation, we need to examine the fact that there are a lot of factors at play. We talk about redistricting and the need to redistrict as part of that. Um, we need to look at everything and every option as a community that is stemming from effective communication at all levels, up and down. Not just saying things in one direction, but a dialogue is a two-way street. And we need to examine every option as a community well in advance of the time that it is critical to make a decision and make sure we have ample time to appropriately examine as a community all factors, all other options before we come to school consolidation. Um, I say this because it's, it's not a viable situation to just consolidate schools. There are too many other factors that will be at play that need to be discussed and addressed that are either going to stem out of school consolidation or are, are going to be spurred by that. So it depends on the way that we decide to go about it and approach it. If it is in a positive way and that is the decision that we come to, then that's where we're at. I professionally disagree. Best practice shows that school consolidation works, so let me tell you why. When you have a diverse program in, in an urban school district, in Philadelphia, Atlanta, Georgia, will all show you, and I encourage you to do your homework this evening or sometime this week. When you spread the wealth of knowledge amongst an urban school district, consolidation does work and it works well. You have to make sure that you rezone your schools according to what, where the empty seats are. That's first and foremost. The second thing is that when you look at um, areas that are high in poverty, it shouldn't be. So sometimes you have to look at what's coming within the schoolhouse, within the school building, and you may have to rezone that to get out of some of the community issues that is affecting the instruction in the building. So again, school consolidation slash rezoning does work when you have a best practice in place, and research does show that for urban school districts. I agree with my colleague, uh, Ms. Harris Mohammed. We have a choice in Richmond. As the moderator has pointed out, our school enrollment has declined since when the schools were built. We have a choice to make as a city. We can continue to operate neighborhood schools, which are more costly, or we can consolidate, construct, and renovate new schools to make our district what we want it to be. But school consolidation in and of itself won't work, as many of the folks have said. You have to rezone, you have to renovate your, your existing buildings, and you have to build some new ones. That's why the school board undertook an 18-month process that involved many, many members from the community across various stakeholder groups to embark upon a comprehensive facilities task force report. That report, an option was voted on and approved by the school board, calls for consolidations, it calls for closures, it calls for new construction, and it calls for renovations. But all of those things have to be done in concert because each step is important. I'm gonna ask you to hold on to that because the next question is incumbent answer first. <laughs> What would you do to improve the seemingly adversarial relationship between the school board, city council, and mayor's office to one of collaboration and cooperation? Well, I think that's, a, a, that's an evolving process. We'll, we as a school board will do what we've always, always done, which is we try to make ourselves available, we make our administration available for city council, for the mayor, to answer questions, provide information. We've done things that haven't been done before. Uh, we've met two times as a collective body. We're trying to schedule a third one. I think it takes time because these issues are important and people are very passionate about public education. What is more important to families in Richmond than the school and the quality of the education that their children get? And so while there, it may seem from a public perspective that we are disagreeing and fighting, you know, that push and pull yields progress. We don't want a monolithic governing body on the school board, nor do we want one on city council. We want the, the give and the take because when you have that honest debate and those grown-up conversations, 
the end product is going to be infinitely better. Thank you, Mr. Boyd. I believe in doing things with decency and order. And just because it may appear from whatever is written or whatever is viewed on the TV that there is an adversarial relationship doesn't mean that it really is when you're inside of that house. I have a very decent and positive relationship with my school, um, excuse me, my city council representative and have had so for the past four years. We communicate often. We don't always agree on issues, but we disagree in the house. And then when we come outside the house, we come as one because we're one unit when we're trying to make decisions for the city. Even though I stand with my school board colleagues, policy making, making sure that we have what we need to run the school district. But I do things with decency and with order. I communicate that way and I model the behavior that way. Irregardless of what the loud noise is saying out there, I still have to do things with decency and order and that's representing the sixth district. So I think it comes back down to talking about what is an effective dialogue. Um, and a dialogue is not just a one-way street. This is a back and forth process among everybody. So it can't just be school board members going to city council and then city council in turn going back to the mayor's office. It needs to be a two-way street. And everybody at all levels of the government need to participate in evolving uh, the communication that is currently going on today. I think also another part of it is that elected officials are here to serve you. You're the constituents that are electing everybody and considering everybody up here. And your opinions need to reflect in our opinions. And we need to make sure that we are exhibiting and exuding servant leadership. Um, if there is a disagreement, it needs to make sure that at the end of the day, it is an effective dialogue amongst all levels to make sure that our constituents and the city as a whole are served um, to become better overall. I totally agree. Anytime there's a town hall meeting, a open forum, or a community meeting, we as the school board, the council, the mayor's office, all need to always come together as one. The thing about it is we're a community raising a child, it's not an individual. And by us being a community raising a child, we all need to be on every level. When that child leaves home and that child comes to school, we need to connect with the home. We need to set all levels and all stages together as one. We need to show that we can agree to disagree. We need to let the families know and we need to let the parents know that we're here for them as a unit, as a whole, not as an individual. So I totally agree that any time that we have a means, yes, we're not going to agree on all the issues, but we can stand together as a unit. Um, from what I've seen, I, I do believe that there's uh, a complete disconnect between uh, our levels of government. Um, we, yes, we're put in place to um, stand our ground, uh, speak, um, and stand up for what we believe in, but at the same time, I do think that um, we have to remember when it's election time, when we put these individuals in place, that education is a priority. Um, it doesn't seem to be a, a priority for a lot of people, so when individuals from school boards say, you know, we want this or we want that, uh, city council may look, uh, look a blind eye at it, you know, thinking economic development on this side is better or putting money towards this is better, but we have to remember that education is a priority in order for our community to grow as a whole. So therefore, we need to find a way that when we vote, that we put those people in place so that we know that we're able to work together, we're able to communicate, we're able to collaborate as a community effort to ensure that our kids are given the quality education that they deserve. I believe that one of the things that is necessary for anybody who's going to be an elected official is uh, humility. We all have to remain humble and realize that we are here to serve not only the children, our constituents, we're here to serve everyone that is in our district. Us on the school board, we are here to serve everyone that is within the city of Richmond. It's not about being adversarial. It's about being able to develop those relationships with those that are on city council and with the mayor 
and to make sure that they realize and understand the importance of education in the city. Education is the most important thing. If we are not going to educate our children, then really what are we elected for? Thank you. We have time for one more question. One more question. And I would like to start from this end and just go straight down. What role do you think the broader community can and should play in strengthening our schools? That's an excellent question. I think the community um, should be able to be involved in our schools, one, through the local PTAs. I think our community should be able to perform walkthroughs, as I did at MLK a week and a half ago. You are the stewards of every school that we have in this district. And you should be able to go into that school, see what's going on in the school, build relationships with the administration, build relationships with the teachers so that you can help support what goes into the school. When you are inside the school, when you're building relationships with people, that, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, that improves instruction. And that is the number one reason why I'm serving on the school board, to improve instruction throughout the district. But we cannot, I cannot, as your current 6th District School Board representative, do that without, without you. So we have an open invitation. If you have not received one, I'm giving you one right now to go into the school and be a partner. So I think that the community is a very key part of making the school system work. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can define community. There's a lot of different ways you can define involvement. What I do know is that there are a lot of uh, existing groups that are out there that could care about children and look to enhance the lives of children. And we as a community right now need to look at those groups and find out how can we enhance what they're doing? How can we build upon what they're doing? How can we help remove obstacles that are impeding them from doing their jobs and what their missions are? And we need to come together as a community and build the existing infrastructure of all of the community groups um, that are out there helping kids be, learn, to, uh, learn to help each other, helping parents learn parenting skills. Whatever that need is, we all have skills to help that situation and we need to provide those. And I, I would encourage everyone to go look at a lot of groups. I, I have the list, I've looked at so many of them, so please come talk to me um, to find out how you can actually get involved. But we need to start um, by looking at what our skills are and, and how we can implement those in the community. Community engagement is really important in a school. A school is built on community for the simple fact that it's plain and simple. When a community is involved in a school, it gives a better quality education. Once again, you can always have that community to come in, like she said, sit in the classroom. You can have teachers and interns from the local colleges come in, and they can build on their expertise as well. You can have the parents come in and sit next to students that might be having trouble reading. So community is really important. Reaching out to your resources, reaching out to the people that you know, have expertise on local businesses around the school as well. It helps the school apply more resources for the simple fact that you can teach children within itself how to, um, you know, network with each other. School is a whole networking opportunity for the simple fact that we all in this room is going to be replaced by a child one day. So community involvement and community engagement is number one. Community involvement in our schools is vital to our success. Government, the school system, city council, the mayor, we cannot do it all. We have to have community, parental, business, nonprofit support and engagement in our schools. Many of our students don't get exposed to those things that they need to have an enriched and vital and, and vibrant educational experience. So we need community members from all across the city to get involved. You know, one of the great things that we've seen over the last three months is this groundswell of support from the community for investment in Richmond Public Schools. That is a wonderful thing. But what I would challenge each and every one of us that were at a rally or showed up to uh, a Save Our Schools event is stay involved even when there's not something going on. Come to school ready to help a child, ready to help 
a principal uh, make their school better. Thank you. Um, I believe in leading by example. I intend to set a foundation of parent staff engagement. Together with the support of parents, coaches, and teachers, we can work tirelessly to develop a transparent form of communication that focuses on the success of our students. That success touches many levels, and it mainly starts at home. I want to effectively communicate with our parents to form a collaborative effort at helping our students not only in the classroom, but at home as well. My goal is to show our parents that we support their efforts and we hear their concerns. We must remain in active communication to ensure our plan succeeds. We all should remember that alone we can accomplish small feats, but together, as a community, we can move mountains. Community involvement is what I do. Uh, MLK Preschool that is over there near Mosby, I'm actually in that school on a daily basis. Not just to pick up my daughter, but also to speak with the teachers and develop relationships with them. Uh, even though I'm not on school board as it is right now, I'm working with three different organizations to try to help with both youth violence and to curb the dropout rates in high schools. We need more parents that are going to work with these organizations to help with the children. We need more parents that are actually going to spend time and volunteer in the schools. It's not much that the school board can do to force the parents, but you have to realize that when you do elect officials, there's only so much that they can do. You as, we as the community, we need to step up and do more. Let's give our candidates a round of applause. City Council candidates, they set the stage. You see how they stuck to that time? That was awesome. <laughs> Just, yes. So, let's move on to City Council.